system is really fractionated. There are different healthcare systems, there are different insurance companies. So sharing data turns out to be really hard. Actually, um, Britain has a much more advanced healthcare system than us in terms of being able to work with data and work with big data because they have the unified system. And so everything has to work together. So there's an, there's an opportunity here. The other opportunity that you have that I think is something really important to think about. You know what the problems are here. I work as an engineer. I work best by solving problems. I work best when someone says, hey, can you do X? I don't just think up things. I'm not good at that. I answer, I, I, I solve problems. If I don't know what the problem is, I'm not going to solve that problem. Um, you know what the problems are here and they're different than the United States. So that means you're gonna be solving problems that are different and so you don't have to worry about competing with us. You can solve a problem here that's really important. For example, I was recently li listening, someone was saying um, at one of the people, one of the groups I was talking to is we need a really good lead sensor that's cheap and distributable. That's not something we might develop in the United States. But that's something important here that you could develop. This would be an ideal opportunity to, to, to develop a little company or to make sensors or to develop a capability. So what is the other big problem? This is the big problem we're having in healthcare around the world. Um, if you think about how healthcare is done now, hospitals are geared towards solving someone getting really sick very suddenly or being very sick. It turns out most of the healthcare problems these days are chronic diseases. I was shocked when I found out 75% of American healthcare dollars are spent on chronic diseases. That's almost two, that's like two trillion dollars. One of the reasons why it's so expensive is because we're not set up to do it very well. People have diabetes, they really get seen, you know, they get seen when they're in trouble, when they have heart problems. Um, the other really good example that, that we are working on is like kidney disease. We see kidney, kidney disease only gets diagnosed at stage three or usually stage four when people don't feel well. At that stage, you need to go on dialysis. So the only solution is incredibly expensive and very localized. So this is sort of where, we, where there's a huge need. The other question is also how do you take care of people who are older? My idea that I think really plays well here too is you don't want people in the hospital, you want people at home. Often people are in the hospital because they're just being monitored. If you can do the monitoring at home, you can, get rid of, you can make it easier for people to be at home instead of at the hospital. And as I like to point out, hospitals are terrible places. It's where people die from horrible you know, flesh-eating bacteria and stuff that are um, you know, resistant to, to, to all sorts of antibiotics. So being at home helps people feel better and get better, but we need to be able to monitor them at home. And in Bangladesh, it's even more so because you need to monitor people in rural areas where there may not be as many doctors. The other thing is, as Tina brought up, that I think is really important, is um, innovation leads to prosperity. The idea of making new ideas, making new things, that's actually how you build up the economy. If you look at the United States, Silicon Valley got developed because we, had, we developed the computer chip, essentially. This is, this is the goal. And so part of why, I was, why Tina's involved me and why I'm here a lot, where I'm here now, is right now a lot of the technology development is in IT. It's in apps. All these apps will be only useful with lots of data and it'll only be useful with new devices. So that there's a, there's a need for new devices that are distributable, that you can develop, that are cheap, that also relate to the Bangladesh situation, okay? Now, with research, um, this was a slide put together by Luke Lee. Um, what this shows, and this was sort of Sometimes in MEMS and micro devices, which is the area I work, we get questions like, why aren't these things out there yet? What I want to point out here is that if you look at, this is a graph, if you look at the Dow Jones Industrial Index, that's sort of our stock market for, for industrial things. 
early on during the war, not much was going on. Then these large scale applications like big computers, um, jets, those things all of a sudden started driving the market. Then there was a relatively flat spot. And anyone have an idea what happened in 1965? Microelectronics, right? This is when we started doing research on chips and developing microelectronics. There was, during this time, there was consistent government funding for this sort of research. And it may not have been huge, but it was consistent. So what happened in during this time is right along here, the fundamentals for this technology were being developed by research. Then all of a sudden, of course, it takes off. In 1980 was pretty much the start of the, um, the miniature computer, the home computer. This is when we first, this is actually when the, the Apple and PC first appeared. And then it's just taken off from there. And then of course we've led into cell phones, which has actually made it really impossible not to work at all times. So it's dubious quality, but basically you have a growth. And this also requires sort of continuous input. Just to give you an example of what sort of things were being developed, um, long-term investments led to electronics with new capabilities, faster chips, and really this set up to Silicon Valley. Oh, by the way, at that time, Silicon Valley worked a lot with Berkeley, and they developed a micro, they developed, they, they, they donated a microfab. If you give faculty a toy, like a microfab, they will play with it. So what happened then is then they started making little machines out of it. They made little motors, they made accelerometers, and gyros. And so now, on the right is a, a, a gyro. In your cell phone, you have a 3D accelerometer, a 3D gyro, and they're all one little chip. In fact, if you look at a Fitbit, that's where you see it, right here. Where, where's my little pointer? Wait. Where'd it go? I can't show it to you, sorry. Anyway, up there, the three, three axis accelerometer. It's now just a chip. It's now made in mass production. They cost $2 a piece. What I'm suggesting for bioengineering, why do I think bioengineering is so great? I think we've actually worked for the last 20 years now on the fundamentals of this sort of nano bio sensor world. Now this is all predictive, right? Because essentially, oh, well, maybe I can't get, oh there it is. We're still here. We're just coming out of this. So we've started the, the basis and I start seeing that there's going to be this incredible growth in terms of this quali quantitative life care systems that are distributable. And you are poised here to start looking at those devices, to start developing new devices. And I think it really matters, and I think it's gonna happen. This is just an example of one. I have to put in something from my lab because I've gotta show off a little bit. Um, this is a device we developed in my lab in combination with a chemist who is next door to me. And what it measures is reactive oxygen species. Your body, I never realized this, you actually have hydrogen peroxide in your blood. How your body kills bacteria is by increasing, by, by the, white, the um, macrophages go and um, put out a whole bunch of hydrogen peroxide in the presence of bacteria and that kills them. Also, when you have liver damage, your, hydrogen, your, your uh, reactive oxygen species go up. So, one of the big problems you have with drugs is that they go through the liver first and they could cause liver damage. So we came up with a device to actually measure um, hydrogen peroxide. The idea is that you could do this quickly if you're taking, there's some cardiac medications that cause liver damage. Nowadays you go and get your blood tested and, um, and they adjust your dosage. This you could do at home. The other thing when you think about doing home health, by the way, you have to make it usable by people. It can't use a lot of blood because if you need to do a venipuncture and spin down the blood, then you need a nurse and you don't get the data. It needs to use a finger prick, like a drop of blood, or it needs saliva, or it needs urine. So how do we help this? Um, we want to expand the skill set. This, this talk is geared towards Bwet, but this all, we also have relationships with uh, Bangladesh University. You'll have to forgive me. Um, I just found out I was giving this talk a little while ago. Um, 
the idea is we really need to combine, we are trying to work more with, uh, with Bangladesh through Berkeley. And as Tina mentioned, we have a um, memo of understandings with both universities and we're trying to increase our access. We're trying to do some faculty exchanges. We're trying to, to somehow work together. One is because I see this as Bangladesh as an untapped resource for some phenomenal graduate students who could really make me famous. Because that's what graduate students do. And I think that this is really important because I think this is, this is how you actually get things done. And of course, because Bangladesh right now is pushing IT, I think the sensors are really important because they provide the data. So right now, I've had one professor um, from Bouet spend three weeks in my lab and she'll be coming back. We're trying to um, increase this. We're just starting some preliminary research. Um, the goal is to, gen you know, to generate basically confidence plus experience in the Berkeley environment that we can translate here. Um, and then we have some more, as I said before, we have these um, strategic alliances started and they are continuing and we're especially establishing this path of, of getting grad students. Let me, I, I want to explain why that's important. Um, when you have no experience with a different, uh, a different country or a different university system and you're looking for your grad students to accept them, it's very hard because you have no, no idea what the levels are, what the letters mean, how hard the schools are. Once you get a few students through, then all of a sudden you realize how good the students are or if it's not or not, but generally from here I think it would be good, then you start bringing in more students. Uh, one assist, um, assistant professor of electrical engineering I just met, at, um, he's at Bouet, his, his professor, he was the first Bangladeshi student in uh, a professor at University of uh, Utah in electrical engineering. Um, the professor has brought over two more students. So you see, so once you have the good experience, then you keep going. And also you can read and understand the students better also with this interaction, it means we can contact a professor we know and say, is this student really good? And that data means enor is enormous. And that's really one of the ways I see how we really grow this communication. Um, I'm also hoping that we get more uh, government research funding in this country. It's just really critical to get this whole mindset for research. It doesn't have to be huge amounts of money, but it has to be consistent. Often what you see are these big spikes in funding to solve a problem. It's, it is the political solution, but that's not ideal. What you really want to do is know that you're getting a certain amount of funding continuously. And that's something that I think is, is really an important thing. Then what happens is once you have the research, then also industry will come in. Industry will not come in really until you have a research program going where they can benefit. So then, they can, then you start getting industry leveraging off of what you're doing. That's great because it's a location of jobs, but it's also a location of where you find problems that need to be solved. And that would be the next step, I think. We have a joint university and uh, industry consortium that's been around for 30 years, and it just continues, and it's just great. Um, and this is the BSAC part that I'm a, a co-director of. It, it is actually really helps working with industry. I like it a lot because they provide um, what I sometimes call is adult supervision because I will try research that may or may not be useful and industry often has a good insight into what is really good. Um, so I'm going to skip some of the BSAC stuff because that's a little different. We have a lot of startups coming out of these things so that's also one of the goals because when you have the research you get, re you get all these startups. And this is one of the things I need, to, I think is really matters, is this long-term support, undergraduate research so they help students think differently. Um, I think this leads to innovative graduate students or graduates, and this is really important, I think. Um, this is the people who will help the startups here. They will fill in middle management. They'll start their own companies, and I think this will get you to 2021, Bangladesh 2021. So wait, before I quit, there's one thing I want to show you. One of the things that got me involved in bioengineering, hang on, let me see if I can find it. I know how to do it. One second, I'm sorry, I'm slow. 
Nope, that's not going to help me. There's the folder. Nope. That's not it either. Help. Where is my volume? Maybe I can't show you. I'm looking for the folder for this, this guy. Oh, it unplugged? Oh, that's what happened. Okay, cool. All right, great. I want to show you this video. How do, wait, wait, wait. Great. Uh, it's hard to see. Let me explain what this is. This is a video from 1960. This is one of the things that drives bioengineering. That is a micro, that is a white blood cell. That's a macrophage. So those are the things that clean, um, that get rid of bacteria. The circles are red blood cells. So they're 10 microns. Now, let me start it again and I'll explain what's going on. Start, there. That's the bacteria it's chasing. This is low Reynolds number flow. It sort of pushes it away. Somehow, it, it, it's going after that bacteria. It ignores the other one. I find this, this video fascinating because before this, we had no idea. We don't, we don't even know. We didn't even know how, back, how these guys moved in the 60s or 70s. It's kind of like a video game, isn't it? But it's just, it's just a, this sort of biology is just amazing to me. The idea of harnessing this sort of ability is amazing. The idea of understanding how that process happens. How does that bacteria actually follow only one of these guys? It basically must be a chemtrail, but how much stuff can a little bacteria, how much, how much smell can a bacteria leave off? I mean, if it was a teenage boy in America using ax, I would understand, but this is a bacteria. Ax clearly doesn't work here. Oh well. Anyway, so I just find this amazing. And so this is some of the research that just understanding this is some of the places where you can see how amazing biology is. And we've come so far in understanding the biology, that's what makes bioengineering possible. That's what makes your interest in pharmacology exciting. Because now we can start doing really new things. We're developing cures with proteins. We're developing cures using uh, CRISPR-Cas9 and genetic modifications. We're doing all sorts of new things. It is really the start of something amazing. And I think it's great that you, you, you students are all interested in this field. I think it's really one of the, the fields that's going to change the world. And, um, and I think it's wonderful. And thank you very much for your attention and inviting me here. This has been wonderful. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Okay? So thank you. Any questions at all? Was I that? I'm actually really good to ask questions of because I have ADD, so I will answer them completely honestly. And then so, oh no, I said that. Yeah. Oh, over here, up here. On your second slide, there was a, 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 a device which can diagnose uh, like ear infection right. or retinal infection. But uh, when it comes to visible things, the, you can, uh, um, uh, the device can detect the visible things. But how it works when it comes to the internal part like ear infection or middle ear infection? Right. Then, then you need to do something else. Right. need to do yeah. something else. This is, this is just for some of the initial diagnoses. And there are many things you can do just by looking at the eardrum. And there are many things you can do with, with, with the retina. Mm -hmm. Often also, if you are, um, once someone has seen a doctor and then they go home, you can watch whether the disease is getting better. So for an ear infection, if you give antibiotics, you can see from the exterior whether it's actually helping. So it's not just, it's just not diagnosis, but also monitoring. But you're absolutely right. You cannot diagnose or, or know the ear infection entirely from just a picture. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Good question.
Come on, you can ask me anything. You can ask me about Berkeley. You can ask me what I think about Bouet versus Bangladesh University. I would prefer if you didn't ask me about Trump, because he's just an embarrassment. And I hear far too much about him all the time. As you can tell, I'm a very stiff professor. Oh, the other one? Tell us something about your Berkeley. Pardon me? About your Berkeley. Yeah? You want to come to Berkeley? Sorry? Oh, tell us about Berkeley? It's a, it's a great university. It's very big. I want to know something about your university. Okay. So, University of California, Berkeley is the um, oldest university in California. It's a land-grant school, so the land was given to it um, in the 1850s. It is one of the, the oldest, biggest private, uh, public schools in California. What is really fun about being there, it's usually ranked in the top five of, of schools internationally. And our engineering program right now is ranked number one internationally. So I had to start a program, a bioengineering department, in this really Do we have any chance to work there? Yes. If you want to go to grad school there, um, you need to apply where we need to get some more connections so that we know, so we understand the schools, but we're trying to develop those. When are you graduating? Thank you. Well, no, no, when are you graduating? Sorry. What year are you? Uh, I'm in 3-2. I'm in uh, third year. Third year. So, you got, so we got one year to go. Yeah. So we will work on that. Okay? Sorry? We will work on trying to figure out how do we get better, more students. What field? Sorry? What field are you interested in? Uh, Pharmacy. Pharmacy. We don't do pharmacy. I, I read pharmacy and I want to work uh, on pharmacology. Pharmacology. Okay. All right. There are some programs there. Also, UCSF is the one that has our, our the school, University of California, San Francisco is the one that has a big pharmacy program. So we're going to try and we will try and figure out how to get better interactions between the schools. And, um, and I'll, we will probably set up some ways of communication. Okay. But I think that's one of my goals, is to try and get more graduate students from Bangladesh into American universities. Okay? That's one of the things we're working on. Thank you. Yeah. Very good. Sir, so in your presentation, you showed a slide that uh, device of a biosensor which detect uh, the liver damage. Yes. I want to know how does it work? Oh, sure, that's a good question. And my last question is, uh, you showed a, a bacteria's slide. Um, uh, what's the name of this bacteria? It looked actually like an E. coli to me, but it's, I, I'm not sure. It's, it's, uh, it's actually a video I got from a friend of mine, and it's very old. So I haven't chased that down, but I bet you it's an E. coli. Okay. Yes, sir. And then, By him, sir. Yeah. Then, um, the question about the ROS sensor. How it works is, that's weird. Oh, it's just a little confused. But what happened was is a colleague next to me had a polymer that would, would break down in the presence of reactive oxygen species. So we were able to develop the, the technology down below those electrodes using a micro device. And so it's just plastic, but there are electrodes on top of it. As you put a drop of blood on top of it, the, if they're reactive oxygen species, it breaks down the polymer, 
and then we just measure the, the change in resistance. Um, so as the resistance drops, you know, we, we can see what happens. So it's a very simple system. The key was getting to talk to a chemist who understood the, the polymer. Thank you, sir. We did try this out, unfortunately, on mice. It turns out Tylenol is one of the... Hi. Oh, hi. You can hear me? Hello? Uh, and uh, I have a question. Um, uh, now I have uh, a great change with... Uh, Hello? Uh, medical technology, now it is medical technology, uh, have changed uh, so and come so far. So, uh, I want to say that uh, if to this uh, video processing or image processing, uh, your virus movement, uh, how help from you? I'm basically CAC background student, and uh, I, I have worked with uh, app and uh, image processing, video processing. So I need to help uh, and uh, need to know that uh, if I want to do a video processing on your virus movement, uh, how can I help from you, or any junior or any other source? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, uh, video processing. Yeah. Your virus movement depend on your virus movement. I, it, is it a virus or how uh, how difficult it is uh, uh, or uh, what type of virus it is? If you want to move from, I mean, there's all this need for doing apps and doing video processing, and there's all sorts of capabilities. Um, and the question was, is can I help find someone to help him do more research in this area? Um, there's not much I can do about that now because I we'd have we work mainly with graduate students. But what I will try and do, um, I'm going to try and see whether I can get Dan to do a cell scope project um, in in the maybe not in Bangladesh but close by and see whether he needs help with that project, right? So that would be a project in, the, in, in this area and see whether we can get you involved somehow, okay? Yeah, we're trying to figure out more how to, how to connect better. Right, right now it's sort of connection through me. Um, and unfortunately, I'm, I'm internet challenged at times, so if I get too many emails, I get confused. Okay. But we're trying to figure out ways of, of, of having it, but I can try many I, different... I think you're super good yeah, but I, you can try and contact me and I will try and give you advice, okay? I, I think the way, may I just Yes. Wants to come to Berkeley. That will help me because otherwise I'll just get a zillion emails and I'll lose them. That's the problem. So we'll try and, we're trying to figure, this is new, right? We, we, this has sort of been put together. This is my first trip here. I'm, I'm hoping to come back, but right now it's my first trip. Yeah.
If we miss that pulse information for some time, we can uh, connect and uh, try and connect and uh, see what happened to that So if we, uh, I mean, I'm not sure whether you like the idea or not, but similar idea if we propose it through our ICT ministry, uh, can we get any help or mentoring from your end? Mentoring, just the mentoring and guidance. I think that's a really good idea. For a while, uh, we had some faculty working on fall sensors. Yes. Um, and I think that's also a good, you know, it, there, there's the worry of when people fall. Um, it turns out falling was hard to tell because it's, uh, falling is, it's hard to identify a fall from like an accelerometer, but, but clearly the pulse would matter. I think you yeah. could do it. The hard part, I, I think what we have to really solve there is if you wear a smart watch and do the pulse, yeah. it's really tight. But not the watch, maybe a device or something yeah, like so that? Yeah, we have to work on that because people try the watch yes. and they hate having a really tight watch. So then they don't wear it or they don't use it. So yes, I think the idea of watching things like pulse because you can also do um, all sorts of analysis with the pulse. You can do heart rate variability, which also indicates disease. So I think that's a great idea. Um, and I think this idea that nowadays you can give people devices that connect in through Bluetooth to a phone oh, yes. and then transmit the data is really, that's sort of yeah. new and it's very, very valuable. I think it's a very good idea. Need your mentoring and guidance. Yeah, for I'll that. write a letter of support for you too. Thank you. Any more questions, please? Thank you. Wow, you even have a white coat on. Uh, we are pharmacy background student. Yeah. If our student want to uh, migration your university, is it possible? Or can it transfer your university, is it possible? Yeah, I think it is possible to get to an American university or to get to use. We don't have pharmacy, but UCSF, the University of California, San Francisco does. You see Davis, the mid pharmacy is often handled in our medical schools, but I think it is possible. I think that's what we're trying to set up now. Um, unfortunately, I think the medical schools are a little bit farther away right now for us because we're not, I'm not at a medical school, but that's one of our goals with this whole program is to try and, is to try and increase the flow of, of students from Bangladesh into American universities. That's sort of our goal. And uh, if uh, any student want to master's in university, how much is this mandatory in university? So, so you want a master's? What was the next question? What's the? MPharm, master's of pharmacy. Uh, if we want to MPharm your university, how much uh, CGP is guaranteed university? And how much need your CGP? So uh, I think it's, uh, you can uh, search on the online and it, uh, there will be pretty much a lot of information in the website. So we can find those information very easily, okay? So if we uh, put our question specific to this presentation, that will be easier for us to I yeah, mean, share the but knowledge, but okay? This, this kind of information, we can easily get it from the website. Also, okay? I don't know Thank it you. because I don't teach Because <laughs> he doesn't know, I understand. I, unfortunately, I don't teach pharmacy. <laughs> exactly. Uh, any more question? This is very useful. Right. No, that's a good choice. And also, the other thing I was thinking about is, is we could actually set up also Skype conferences. 
where um, we set up a time when a bunch of students who have questions can come to a Skype conference and I'll, I'll log on, right? Because then I can answer a lot of questions at once. Yeah. Uh, dear sir, uh, we just saw uh, a uh, machine that can do uh, uh, a machine of sensor for the detection of damage. I want to know how it works, the machine of, uh, yes sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Well, you the detection of liver damage. So uh, I want to uh, know which technology is used uh, for a uh, digital biosensor, and uh, if I invent a digital biosensor. How can we do it? Okay, so you want to sense, you want to sense the reactive oxygen, sort of things like this. And it's all online, because it's um, online, because it's online, because it's online, because it's online. There are some existing uh, devices for measuring this. They're usually in the lab. So this would be the only one that would work in the hospital. That's sort of what we were looking at. The idea is, my theory of getting people away from the hospital, or going in to get blood draws, that's what this is an example of. I think you can do also other sensors this way, as long as you have a polymer or some material that you know, reacts with whatever you want to measure. Then you can make another mm -hmm. sensor. Then this this type of sensor. Mm -hmm. And how you build a company on that is hard. Uh, when you find a real need, and so far for me, um, we haven't seen much.
Uh, sir, yes, sir, I'm a working as a senior officer in the CC department. I have a question for you. That uh, what are the latest invention in bioengineering that you are working with in your university? Thank you. I think we, we've had a lot of questions. And if you have any more questions, you can send it in our email. Uh, we have an email address, innovation at the rate boeu.edu.bd. And if you will send us the email with the questions, we can send it to our uh, our uh, guest, Mr. Dorian. And uh, with that, I would like to conclude our program today. And I'd like to thank you, uh, thank uh, uh, all of you. And a special thanks to our honorable guest, Mr. Dorian Lipman, for his wonderful speech and experience that he shared with us. And also, our, uh, uh, Tina Madam, she also uh, showed you some hope and opportunity to work with. And we can, we'll definitely submit some ideas to the ICT ministry. Hopefully, we'll get through those ideas, and our innovation will, lab will be more focused with their research and innovations. And uh, uh, I'd like to thank our vice, honorable vice chancellor, sir, uh, for his presence in this program, and also for his uh, time and uh, organizing the event and uh, a special thanks to our Sadiq Iqbal sir as well. Thank you very much. And we will have a small photo session with all the students first and after that uh, uh, the fa faculty will take uh, some photographs. So first one with the students. Yeah, once we are done with the photographs, the students may Student <laughs> to request our honorable guest to uh Have a seat, have a seat, have a seat. Dear students, please have a seat.
Bu da